So now to conclude our look at different reproductive events that we see in nature, we've looked at an example of an asexual and a sexual, and also how reproductive cycles are reliant on environmental cues in the Greenland caribou example. We're going to move forward by looking at one last reproductive event, and that's going to be the idea of hermaphroditism. So let's write this down. Hermaphor, I want to make sure I spell this right, ditism. And we're going to initially just say it right on the onset that this is a sexual form of reproduction, but it's a specific event that occurs in some organisms. It's a very interesting event because hermaphroditism is going to be the following scenario. You're going to have one individual, one individual organism with both a male and also a female reproductive system in both, in, in one organism, let's say. So both a male plus a female repro reproductive system within this individual. So now, what does this sort of lead to in terms of consequences of sexual versus asexual reproduction? Well, this is obviously a sexual form of re reproduction because there's both male and female involved. That would mean you need fertilization. But the fertilization can be either self-fertilization, because you have this capability, a lot of plants do this, or you could have the idea of cross-fertilization, and the plants also do this. So plants are always a classic example of hermaphroditism, but I think a more advanced example that we should be looking at is in the animal world, and that animal example are going to be wrasses, and before we look at those that specific example, I want to mention the idea of sequential hermaphroditism. This is an important process that occurs in some organisms, um, and let's write this down hermaphroditism. Okay, so what is this? This is a specific reproductive event that's sexual in nature that's going to have the following consequence, following result. The individual who has this male and, male and female reproductive system within them actually has the capability of reversing. The individual reverses the sex during lifetime. So maybe male first turning into female later or vice versa. And there are specific names for those types of sexual hermaphroditic events. That would be the following. So you could either be a protogenous, let's say, organism or species, or you could be a protoandrous species. So proto means first. And then genus over here is going to refer to female, and andrus over here is going to refer to male. So essentially what we have in a protogenous organism is that this will be a hermaphrodite that's initially female, so we'll write female first, and because you can reverse the sex during the lifetime, what will you reverse to? Then you can turn into a male. So female first, then male. Protoandrus is going to be, of course, the opposite, where you have male first, then female male first, then turning into female. Okay, so that's the basic premise behind sexual hermaphroditism. Um, example of protoandro species could be many clownfish exhibit this, and wrasses, which are another type of fish, are going to be exhibiting protogenesis. And that's what we're going to be looking at in our example of a reproductive event in nature that's very interesting. So example would be wrasses. So, wrasses are a type of reef fish. They live in reef environments and ecosystems. So, what do they do? First of all, we mentioned that they're protogenous. So, that would mean that they are first female, and they eventually can switch and turn into male because of their hermaphroditic nature. So, what happens uh, in wrasses is the following. You have to first understand that they live in what are called harems. Okay? Harems were briefly mentioned in Bio 1 when we talked about ecology and different groups of organisms. Harems are essentially a, a large group of organisms in which where we have a, one species where there are lots and lots of females. Okay, there are going to be lots of females in this group, but only one male, one dominant male, we should say. And that one dominant male will be the most successful male. That male will be the one that will reproduce the most. But let's say, because we are in this harem situation, what if that one male that's in charge of all this reproduction and making sure the reproduction happens, because there is sexual reproduction that needs to occur between male and female races, what if that one male dies? What if we remove the male? 
how does this organism continue to survive? If there are a bunch of females and only one male in these specific RAS populations that we're looking at, what would happen if you remove the male? Well, what would happen is sequential hermaphroditism. The protogenous side of RASes would show up. What would essentially be, and I think this is fascinating, you're going to have the largest, and usually with the largest, it's typically the oldest, essentially the largest slash oldest female changes to male. Why is that possible? Well, that's because they're hermaphrodites. They have this capability to turn into a male based off of their initial female structure. Now, why is it the largest and the oldest? Well, that's because the largest and the oldest female is going to be the one that, if turning into a male, would be the most dominant and would be the most successful, and thus that would be the one that would be that one male within this large harem female population. So in order to maintain this harem structure, you have this perfect way of making sure that there's always just one male and many females. One male goes away, one male dies, let's say, then you can just have the largest and oldest female turn into the next most dominant male, essentially. And that's our look at sequential hermaphroditism, specific type of hermaphroditism. Again, remember, it's sexual because you need to have fertilization here. You need to have meiosis, and you need to have a fusion of gametes. And that's a final look at our reproductive events. We're now going to be looking very specifically and beginning our um, direct look at the male reproductive system in humans, now that we've got this background and introduction out of the way.